Hi guys, this is Fiona from IELTS with Fiona and in today's lesson we're going to look at listening section 3. Listening section 3 is all about an academic topic so it's very often two students talking together about a presentation or an assignment or it's a student talking to the tutor and asking for feedback on the project or the research they're doing, something like that. Sometimes there are lectures, but usually it's a dialogue. So what I noticed about this one, which is from book 18, I chose it for a very specific reason. Normally, when we talk about academic language, you might think, oh, that's the academic word list. That means formal words. Well, it doesn't really. Academic means related to basically university studies. And this is what I mean in this part three when I talk about it being academic, because they always talk about some project that they're doing at university. But this one is even more academic than that. So the normal everyday things that I would associate with part three are words like presentation, project feedback, suggestions, things like that. And I've got lots of lessons about the signals that they use and how to follow the signals. But in this one, it's more academic in terms of the language they use to talk about and refer to research. They use very specific terms that you may not be familiar with unless you've done a degree at, say, a UK or English speaking university. So things like the science behind doing research, basically getting your sources, that's one word uh, they mention here, your primary sources, your secondary sources, and these are things you have to talk about when you're doing a dissertation at university. And then they talk about evidence and who is credited with the research. A lot of language comes up in this listing, so I've listed it all for you on my website and in the Members Academy. So let's go through the listening today and I'll point out some of the words as they come up. Really, there's too much to go into in detail in this podcast because every question contains something. And if you go to my daily tips, for example, we'll look at how this listening will help you with your writing task one. And I'll come back to that later. There are 10 tips for just one multiple choice question. I'll explain that a bit more later. So it's quite a complicated podcast today, but hopefully I will at least simplify the listening for you. But always keep that in mind. Listening is complex. It involves so many skills that you might not realise what you're doing as you're listening. You can't just think about basic strategies like underlining keywords. I know they are important, but there's so much more to listening than that. So this listening is all about a volcano which erupted in a place called Lackey in 1783. And the two students are Michelle and Adam. They're discussing their presentation. And of course, this involves discussing what they've learned about this volcanic eruption. It starts with Adam and he says, so Michelle, shall we make a start on our presentation? And Michelle says, we haven't got much time left but we've done the background reading. The background reading is, of course, a key word for academic studies. It's the initial reading that you do before you start to delve deeper into the subject. So Michelle says, we've done the background reading. I found it interesting. I'd never heard of the eruption before. And Adam says, me neither. I suppose 1783 is a long time ago, so we're getting used to their voices. And the first question is about 1783. It's multiple choice. The question says, why do the students think that the lucky eruption of 1783 is so important? Here are the three options. A, it was the most severe eruption in modern times. B, it led to the formal study of volcanoes. Or C, it had a profound effect on society. 
Now, remember, of course, all these three things will be mentioned. And we heard the first one. Michelle said, I'd never heard of the lucky eruption before this. And Adam said, I suppose 1783 is a long time ago. So you can cross off A for two reasons. It wasn't the most severe eruption in modern times. It was a severe eruption, but it was a long time ago. And there's no mention that, that it was the most. They simply don't say that. So cross off A. Then Michelle says it was a huge eruption and it had such devastating consequences. So we've already got the idea that it had a negative impact. This is great task two language, devastating consequences, great collocation. And this will lead us to think about the answer C. It had a profound effect on society. We still need to hear about whether it had an effect on society. Adam says, there were so many primary sources to look at. So here's your first mention of research. It really gives you a sense of how catastrophic the volcano was. People were trying to make sense of the science for the first time. Now, when you hear the word science, you might think science like biology, chemistry or physics. But it's the science which means really the research that they had already done. And so we can cross off that it led to the formal study of volcanoes. The formal study is the science of volcanoes. That's what it means. It did not lead to this. They were trying to make sense of the science, which already existed. So, C, it had a profound effect. We're still waiting to hear, was this an effect on society? Let's listen. It says, what I found more significant, and here is the synonym for the question, what was important, and also here's the emphasis and the signal. So there's lots of things going on. He says, what I found more significant was how it impacted directly and indirectly on political events, as well as having massive social and economic consequences. There it is. There's the answer. Social and economic consequences. Massive is a synonym for profound effect. So the answer is C. And again, look at the language there. It impacted on. That's a nice expression, using impact as a verb. So for question 21, the question was, what did they find so important? And the answer came in that response, what I found more significant was, so that's the synonym. Now in 22, the question is, what surprised Adam about observations made at the time? So you only need to focus on what surprised Adam. Now, observations, here's a scientific word in a sense. It means what they recorded about what was happening. What was the evidence produced at that time? A, the number of places producing them. So the reference word, them, is important, refers back to observations. B, the contradictions in them, meaning, again, the observations, or C, the lack of scientific data to support them, the observations. So what do we need to know? We, what surprised him? The number, so the quantity, or B, the contradictions, meaning that some people said different things, or C, the lack of data to support the observations. That's another research term. You always have to have data to support your arguments in task two, for example. So let's have a look at what surprised Adam. Michelle says, the observations made by people at that time were interesting, weren't they? I mean, they 
they remember refers back to observations. So we're looking at reference words here. She says they all gave a consistent account of what happened. Consistent meaning the same. So it's not B. There are no contradictions. Cross out B. Even if they didn't use the same terminology. So I can see the trick here. They didn't always use the same terminology, but the accounts were consistent. They were the same. Terminology is another academic word there, meaning the, using the right words to describe what happened. But we're still listening for what Adam thought. And he says, I was surprised there were so many. And that's your answer. I was surprised there were so many weather stations established by that time. So the weather stations were producing the observations and that gave us answer A, the number of places, the weather stations producing the observations. And really then there's nothing for C, the lack of scientific data. They just don't mention that. So, according to Michelle this time, this is question 23, what did the contemporary sources say about the Lackey Hayes? So, remember we had primary sources, this time we've got contemporary sources, meaning at the time, and what did they say about the Lackey Hayes? Now, don't worry if you don't know the word haze, meaning that kind of, you know, smoky kind of fog, all you've got to do is hear the word lackey haze and note what they said. So A, people thought it was similar to fog. B, it was associated with health issues. Or C, it completely blocked out the sun for weeks. So what does Michelle say? She says writers at the time, contemporary at the time, talked about the lackey haze to describe the volcanic fog that spread across Europe. They all realised this wasn't the sort of fog they were used to. So you can cross off A. They didn't think it was similar to the ordinary fog. She says, of course, this was in pre-industrial times, so they hadn't experienced sulphur-smelling fog before. So cross off A. Now Michelle continues. She says, reports from the period blamed the haze for an increase in headaches, respiratory issues and asthma attacks. What are they? Those are health issues. So the answer is B. They blamed the haze for an increase. It was associated with health issues, an increase in headaches, Respiratory, meaning breathing, that's a formal academic word, and asthma attacks. Now, here's the trick or the distractor. They all describe how it covered the sun. Okay, so it covered the sun and made it look a strange red colour. Option C said it completely blocked out the sun. Well, it didn't completely block out the sun. It covered it and made the sun red. And for weeks is not mentioned. So it's not C. And the answer is very clearly B, the health issues, because they gave you three examples of health issues. Now, the next one mentions Benjamin Franklin. So question 24. And we're looking for something that Adam correct something that Michelle says about Benjamin Franklin. Basically, she claims, she says that Benjamin Franklin, and here are the choices, A, came to the wrong conclusion about the cause of the haze. B, was the first to identify the reason for the haze. Or C, supported the opinions of other observers about the haze. Now, maybe Benjamin Franklin did all of these, but only one of them is the thing that Adam corrects her. 
when she says something which he says is wrong. So what does she say? She says, it's interesting that Benjamin Franklin wrote about the Hayes. He was the American ambassador in Paris at the time. Adam says, at first, no one realised the haze was caused by the volcanic eruption in Iceland. So that looks like A, but remember, that's not what he corrects her about. She says, it was Benjamin Franklin who realised that before anyone else. Notice the emphasis. It was Benjamin Franklin who realised that. What does that refer to? That the haze was caused by the eruption in Iceland. That's what she thinks, that he realised before anybody else. Now, Adam corrects her. He says, actually, he's often credited with that, apparently, meaning that people often say it was him. But actually, here's the answer, a French naturalist beat him to it. So this French naturalist realised before Franklin. It's a tricky one and maybe the but can help us there. Anyway, that's what he corrects Michelle about. And the answer is therefore B. And then C is a distractor. He says, other naturalists had the same idea independently of each other. So, distractor C is about the other observers. Just ignore that. We don't need that. So, the answer for 24 is B. And then we come to questions 25 and 26. And we're looking for two issues following the eruption that surprised both students. And here they are, there's a choice of five. A, how widespread the effects were, so how far they spread. B, how long lasting the effects were. Interesting compound adjective there, which we've been doing a lot of in the academy recently. It shows how important they are. So, how long-lasting, meaning lasting a long time, of course. C, the number of deaths it caused. Obviously, that's clear, how many deaths. D, the speed which the cloud, the ash cloud, spread, how fast. And E, how people ignored the warning signs. So, we're looking for how far, how long, how many, how fast, and the last one, how people ignored the signs. But remember, we might hear all of those, but we're just looking for what surprised them. Now, here's some academic language that's really important. Michelle introduces this. She says, all right, we should talk about the immediate impact of the eruption. So there's our signal. It introduces us to the issues following the eruption. She says, which was obviously enormous, especially in Iceland, where so many people died. So there's C, the number of deaths it caused. But Adam says, well, yeah, you'd expect that. Again, this is scientific research. What would you expect? Or what is surprising or unexpected? What's predictable based on evidence? He says, well, you would expect lots of deaths. And also the fact that the volcanic ash drifted so swiftly. Swiftly, here's the synonym, the speed at which it spread. So he's saying that these two things are predictable. They're not surprising. Of course, it's going to cause a lot of deaths. Of course, it's going to spread really fast. But he says, again, here's the, but not that the effects would go on 
for so long? So here's one answer, something you would not expect. B, how long lasting the effects were. He says, two years after the eruption, strange weather events were being reported as far away as North America and North Africa. So there's the second one, how widespread the effects were. And then there's a distractor. Michelle says, I found all that hard to believe too. So she's agreeing with him. We can see these two things they both were surprised at. And she says it must have been terrible. There was nothing anyone could do about it, even if they knew the ash cloud was coming in their direction. So they didn't ignore the warning signs. They knew about them, but they couldn't do anything. So it's not E, E is a trick. So the last part, this is four questions where you're matching the countries with the impact that the volcano had on them. The question says, what comment do the students make about the impact of the eruption on the following countries? So Iceland, Egypt, the UK and the USA. And the six things are, the country suffered the most severe loss of life. So basically, which country had the most deaths? B, the impact on agriculture was predictable. C, there was a significant increase in the deaths of young people. D, animals suffered from sickness. E, the country saw the highest rise in food prices in the world. And F, it caused a particularly harsh winter. Now, I don't think you can guess any of those and you haven't got time. The thing that helps you here is that they go in the same order that you hear them. So first of all, you'll hear Iceland. And you've just got to get what was the impact in Iceland. Michelle starts, she says, we should run through some of the terrible consequences. Adam says, starting with Iceland, where the impact on farming was devastating. So he introduces farming and your eye goes to B, the impact on agriculture was predictable. But that's not exactly what he says. He says the impact on farming was devastating. Michelle says one of the most dramatic things there in Iceland was the effect on livestock. So this is animals, livestock, a key word. It's in my first unit in the vocabulary course. Livestock, animals, farming, very important. The effect, she says, on livestock as they grazed in the fields, they were poisoned because they ate vegetation that had been contaminated with fluorine as a result of the volcanic fallout. So animals were poisoned. And the answer is D, animals suffered from a sickness and that sickness is poison, poisoning. Next is Egypt. Adam says, in Egypt, the bizarre weather patterns led to a severe drought again keywords drought and as a result the nile didn't flood which meant the crops all failed so it's something about food crops which failed michelle says it's far from where the eruption happened and yet the famine there led to more people dying than any other country. So we've got a kind of superlative here, more than any other country. And this gives us A, this country suffered the most severe loss of life, not from the volcano, but from the aftermath, what happened afterwards and the effect it had on the crops, which failed.
Again, keywords, famine, failed. Now, question 29 is the UK. This is an interesting one. This is the one I talk about in the 10 tips. So it says in the UK, the mortality rate went up a lot. It was double the usual number and included an unusually high percentage of people under the age of 25. Now, if you've done my writing task one course, you'll know I teach this as a really important language item. We know that the mortality rate, the death rate went up a lot. So there was an increase. It was double the usual number especially in people under 25. So we've got synonyms there of C. There was a significant increase in deaths of young people. And that is your task one writing. You know, that's how writing helps listening and how listening helps writing. It's all connected. So you can't just take the easy route with listening. You can't just underline words, learn vocabulary and hope for the best. You have to look at listening in this way. If you're listening to this podcast, you're doing the right thing. You've got to look at what I call the nitty gritty of language. There are no shortcuts. And look at what this teaches us. First of all, in the UK, the article, the UK, the USA. When you look at the questions, there's no article, there's no the. But when you write on a graph, when you describe a graph, you have to say in the UK. Then we've got there was. There was a significant increase. Synonym, it went up a lot. Then there's a pronunciation of went up. In my pronunciation course, we talk about what happens in fast speech. Went up sounds like when up because the T moves. You have to recognize that. And you have to recognize the synonyms. Mortality is a formal word meaning deaths. Respiratory, formal word meaning breathing. Synonym for young people, people under the age of 25. You use all of these in task one. Double and rounding up words like about double. So the word double is important. You can use it as a verb, something doubled, or there were twice as many deaths. This is all coming into your writing. Also, it says according to one report. That's really important that you don't make up articles. You just use this kind of language according to research, according to some studies. And finally, they make assumptions. They say presumably from respiratory illnesses, presumably, meaning it's likely, but we're not sure, we have to guess. It's another word that's used a lot in reading, in the reading text. So that's just one question and we can learn so much from that. So let's get back to question 29 and, sorry, question 30, the USA, she says, People will be surprised to hear that the weather in the USA was badly affected too. George Washington makes a note in his diary that they were snowbound, meaning they were stuck in the house because of snow. And there was ice floating down the Mississippi River, which was unprecedented. This is a key word, unprecedented meaning it's never happened before. And this gives us the answer. It caused a particularly harsh winter. That's F, particularly harsh. Why? Because they had never seen ice floating down the Mississippi before. Okay, so that was a difficult and complex part three. It's probably much easier if you can see the question. So you can Google this and I've also got it on my website as part of the bronze membership and it's in the members academy and you can also watch a video of me going through it. Um, I hope that you found it useful. 
Remember, we said that this was a special listening because it talked a lot about academic research. And we talked about words like background reading, conclusions, evidence, experiments, primary sources, observations, all the kinds of things that you, you need to know about when you do a degree at university. And that's why IELTS is a kind of mini version of an academic skills course, making assumptions, doing research, referring to research, all of that, describing data. And that's all in the members course. It's now in the listening course. It will be in the vocabulary course. So um, do let me know if you've got any trouble finding that or if you have any questions. Thank you for listening. Let me know if you've got any requests. Bye for now. Bye bye.